everyone, welcome. My name is Leah Althauser and I'm with Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. And today we're checking out a really cool outdoor activity that's fun for the whole family. We're looking at tide pools. Today we're in Titlow Beach in Tacoma and we're looking at sort of different types of tide pools and the different types of tide pools that live in urban marine habitats. And I'm really excited because I know that there's a lot to find. But before I uh, begin looking at tide pools, there's a few things that I want to remember. First, I want to make sure that my hands are, are free and they're clean of sunscreen, of hand sanitizer, that they don't have anything on them. Because if I see an animal that I want to interact with or touch gently, I want to make sure I don't have any of uh, those things on my hands. Second, because I'm going into another animal's home, I want to make sure that I'm really respectful. So I'm always watching where I'm walking, make sure I'm not stepping on any critters, um, and not leaving any trash behind, maybe leaving only footprints and taking only pictures and memories. Finally, uh, you want to make sure that uh, you want to consider the time of day. So if you go in the afternoon when it's really, really hot, you may be putting some extra stress on those critters. My favorite time to tide pool is when it's overcast or cloudy or even better yet, raining. Because that's when you get to see the most critters come out and you get to have the most enjoyable time. All right. Let's go. So as we look down here, we'll notice that the, the different types of eelgrass, of sea belt, and of the succulent seaweed, this really pretty red species, they create sort of a layered habitat for the different types of animals that live in a tide pool. Today, we've already seen a hairy helmet crab, and we're gonna see what else we can see in just a minute. So while exploring tide pools, you may come across things that you just don't know what they are. Well, luckily there's some really cool technology that can help you out. So when walking today, we came across this really interesting orange blob. So I got out my cell phone. I have iNaturalist downloaded on it. I took a picture and iNaturalist told me that we found a sea cauliflower. How cool, I've never seen one before. So now I can go home and learn more about sea cauliflower. It's a great way to get to know the tide pools in your area and to learn more about the critters who call those tide pools home. Look what we found, some sea cauliflower in the water. And what do you know, when it's in the water, it looks just like cauliflower. Holy cow, we just found something really cool. Let's take a look. Here we have two orange sea cucumbers. Orange sea cucumbers are, they're a really special treat because they're not always commonly seen. So we're really excited to see them today. Get to see them kind of move around. Now, I want you to take a closer look at this picture. There's a third animal that maybe you do or don't see. Take a minute. Did anyone spot the juvenile hairy uh, helmet crab right here? He's kind of camouflaged, and camouflage is when animals blend into their environment. And that's to help protect them from predators or to help uh, hide them so that they can find their prey better. Just on the other side of that rock, we found another really cool surprise. Here is a great example of camouflage. We have an okra sea star. So whenever we're looking at tide pool animals, I always like to use the two finger rule. So that means you take your two fingers very, very gently and just softly touch them. Remember, these animals, this is their home. And so we have to try to remember how would they feel? How do they feel? We don't want to come into someone else's home and make a mess and pick them up and move them all around. We just want to touch them very, very gently, again with those two, two fingers, and be really respectful of them in their homes. So this could also include practicing leave no trace. So make sure if you accidentally drop any garbage that you're picking it up, be really careful where you're walking because you could be walking on someone's home and just be really respectful of the animals in their homes. Just like you would want someone to be respectful of you in your home or in your room. You wouldn't want someone to come in and take your things and make a mess of, of your room or your house. So try to keep that in mind when we're hanging out with tide pool animals. As with any habitat, there are some, you may find some animals that have died. So here we have a little purple shore crab. And this little purple shore crab, uh, you can see it up close. He provides me a great opportunity to check out how cool crabs are without actually harming a live animal. Sort of look at its cool pinchers. 
And what's really neat um, is that I'm just going to put this little crab back in the water and we'll hope that a scavenger like a crow or maybe a gull will come by and eat it for dinner. And this is when it's really important to stop and to slow down and to look at what's around you. Because in looking uh, just at the ground right here, there's all sorts of these teeny tiny crabs. They're no bigger than my pinky fingernail. And they're really hard to see. But what's cool is that they're burrowing underneath all of the rock and the gravel. And so they're probably trying to escape the sun. They're trying to escape predators. And so I'm gonna leave them alone and we're gonna walk on. But it's just a good reminder, you never know what's under your feet or what's around you. Tide pool is a great habitat, not only for that intertidal marine life, but also for terrestrial or uh, av avian or aerial life as well. And so today we've already seen some seals, there's probably some sea lions out there, there's gulls that are eating things, there's crows, we've seen some great blue herons. All sorts of different animals are supported by these really important intertidal tide pool habitats.